We wanted to make an epic diorama about the fourth Tyrannic War, the latest narrative push in Warhammer 40k. And if anyone has an axe to grind with the Tyranids, it's Marnius Kalgar and the Ultramarines. It's, it's tabletop, tabletop time. time. I'm Dave. I'm Jen. Let's do it. We were getting really excited about this idea, and when we saw the brand new faction release for Tyranids in Tacticus, we reached out and partnered with them to bring this awesome concept to life. They loved it, so we get to make an awesome diorama. So we want to make the Ultramarine's last stand, as Marnius Kalgar and his allies face off against a Tyranid horde. So we're going to put Marnius Kalgar right in the middle on top of an Imperial bunker, and the Nids are going to be crawling all on top of it. And leading the bad guys into battle, we're going to be converting a winged Tyranid Prime, who's going to be charging directly for Marnius. This character is not only new to 40k, but also a brand new to the game of Tacticus. We're also going to use the awesome Tyrant Guard model and a couple of Termagants. But hope won't be lost for Manius, as I like the idea of an Inceptor blasting down on plumes of smoke as he arrives to save the day. But we want this battle to be absolutely brutal, so let's put a couple of Cadian bodies on the ground. This diorama build is going to include a lot of elements from foam crafting to scratch building and some famous characters from Warhammer 40k's history. So we're going to divide and conquer and tackle this project starting now. All right, we're going to need some bestigons to rough out exactly how big we want the bases for these models to be. So I'm going to fire up the laser cutter and we'll cut some out. Now I'm really glad I opted to cut several sizes of these hexagons as this allows me to compare and decide just how big I want these areas to be. As you can see, I also took the scale far too small and also far too big. So I can definitely decide, no, actually, I don't want to go, say, this big. This is far too much area. One model is going to get absolutely lost in this. And about the middle range is just perfect. Now, with that decided, it's time to cut out a whole lot of hexagons out of foam. All right. And just like that, we have our first hexagon. Now to cut about 30 more. Murray, you've hexed me. I have. I can't believe you've got them so precise with just a knife. So we're going to basically map out and try and emulate the designs that we talked about and Jen sketched up on the computer and test out what this would look like in the real world. So the idea we had was to have this raised bunker. This is actually something we see in a bunch of Tacticus maps, but it's also so inherently 40K. Mm. We're gonna lean into the modularity of some of the Imperial defenses or the barricades and such that they build. It's gonna really lend to this design and we're gonna make a little fortress. So while I'm placing all these pieces out, I can see a couple of little things. We're going to have to make some nice steps to transition the tall areas to the lower areas. We're also, once we glue all this together, we're going to need to clad the sides. I'm thinking maybe with Plasticard to detail out that Imperial Bastion look. So naturally, hexes don't perfectly fill out a square, so we can use all the spare bits we have to block out those extra areas, clean around the edges, and then we can focus on our little mini dioramas within the big piece. One aspect that would be really cool would be to actually detail and model Bellator coming in for a landing, riding down on his jump pack as he lands to reinforce the Ultramarines. So in spacing it all out, I think we can see that Murray's choice of size for these hexes works really well. And now it's our job to detail these out and make sure they don't feel like hexes on a game board, but it feels like a seamless integration and a really cool Warhammer diorama. Let's get started. Awesome. As a daily player of Tacticus, the narrative push of 10th edition really ties nicely with this latest release from Tacticus. So we're going to be making a Tyrant Guard, a Winged Prime, and some Gaunts, which the Winged Prime can actually summon. And I think I'd like to put a little bit of an homage to Death Leaper hiding in the long grass. So I'm going to grab the model kits and start kit bashing some stuff that's going to look really good on this diorama. So one of the characters we want to use is actually Certus, a Primaris Eliminator sniper from Tacticus, but we don't have any Primaris Eliminators. But Games Workshop did send us one Warhammer Heroes, and I see we have an Eliminator, so it's time to gotcha. No. No. This is oddly on theme for tactics, because you do 10 pulls to get characters. Someone's opened all these. Someone has sniffed through these. All of all of them open. <laughs> yes! Alright, this will make a wonderful Certus. We have our Eliminator Sniper. Four specs on the base. Use that to upgrade your characters. And a hooded head with the goggles, so. Oh, he's even got that. That's literally like his head. But you're saying that he has the all specs on the base, so Certus has already gotten some good drops because he dropped it. 
So the Ultramarines I'm building today focuses on the legendary Marnius Kalgar, the chapter master of the Ultramarines, and a character who has been interestingly sidelined slightly by the return of Primarch Gulliaman. Nevertheless, he did receive a gorgeous Primera Space Marine model, and that's what I'm gonna be building. Now, due to the way we've structured this diorama, I actually don't need to change anything about this model, and it's a good thing that I don't. There are multiple overlapping plates, ammo belts, chains, all of these elements would need to be individually converted and custom built and re-sculpted if I was to repose parts of this model. However, Marnius is dynamic and awesome enough, so I'm quite happy to build him as he is. But it isn't just Marnius Kalgar who will be battling on this side of the Ultramarines in this diorama. So I also built up that Primaris Eliminator that I would be using to represent the character Certus from Tacticus. This model was exceptionally easy to build given that it is one of the Warhammer Heroes models and they're actually a clip together sprue. So so it went together incredibly smoothly, but I did apply some glue to ensure that it was stable. The final ultramarine for this diorama will be a Primaris Inceptor dropping from the sky on a plume of fire. There is an Inceptor ultramarine character in Tacticus named Bellator, and he has the unique ability to summon a whole bunch more Primaris Inceptors from the sky to surround and murder any of your enemies. I'm quite familiar with most of the ultramarines characters due to the fact you unlock them over the course of standard play as you first get into the game. Now we have a rare opportunity when making these videos and we thought it'd be really cool to actually talk to Arvid, the game designer over at Snowprint Studios for Tacticus. I think it's not often we get to hear from mobile game developers. So I sat down, got on Google Meet, had a good chat with Arvid and asked a bunch of questions about Tacticus. Hello Arvid, nice to talk to you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Thanks for having me. So you've got some exciting new releases happening with all the Tyranids coming out for Tacticus. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, Tyranids. Uh, were originally just uh, meant as an NPC faction in Tacticus, just the bad evil guys you always defeat, but then the community was very loud of wanting to have them as playable characters. So with so many iconic Tyranids, was it difficult for the team to choose which ones would be included in the game? Uh, yeah, actually for Tyranids we had quite some back and forth because there was all the new units coming. It's always a bit time critical to get all information in time. Creating a unit takes several months with all the art and design in front of it and then the implementation and testing. Thank you very much for taking the time with me today. I think I should say, is there anything um, anything you would like to get across to the viewers? Yeah, we are really uh, happy with all the feedback that we get from the community, see all the creators uh, putting in great work and being passionate as we are about the game. I think without the community it would have been not so successful as it is right now. We built the game for you and um, it's really great to see that everybody likes it so much. So obviously in a YouTube video where we're building a diorama, we can't have a full interview with the game designer from Tacticus, but if you're interested in watching that, we've actually put a link in the description to the full interview. So you can hear all the answers to the questions I asked, find out a little bit more about how games like that are made and some of the exciting or difficult decisions that go into choosing characters for games like Tacticus. All right, so while Dave works on building the actual miniatures, I'm gonna work on the fronts of these bunkers. You can't really tell, but these raised train pieces are gonna be part of a fortress. So I'm gonna work on the fronts. In the game, they're sort of all these bunkers with raised ledges and little firing slits. So I'm gonna model those using plastic card. Now once I was happy with the design for the bunkers, I had to do the very laborious task of cutting out all the panels that I'd need to size. As of course this bunker is featuring one high tiles and two high tiles, so I just had to accommodate both sizes in my design. The two high tiles will feature the firing slits in the walls. All of these bunkers, these defensive tiles, will feature this defensive wall that is scaled for a human, will be clad in a two and a half mil thick sheet of plastic card, which will really emphasize how defensive these pieces are, as well as just fitting in with the fairly chunky aesthetic of Warhammer. Now what sets the two high tiles apart is that they're also going to feature firing slits in them, allowing supposed Imperial reinforcements inside to fire from. I filled out the gaps in all the panels using more plastic card to create more of a structural pattern and then capped everything off with more plastic card that then featured spikes on the top to better fit in with the ones shown in the game. So Dave is building Certus and the rest of the Ultramarines, but I'm going to go ahead and start converting up these Tyranids. 
So the first model I needed to make was a Tyrant Guard. This guy is a massive brute who is really good at defending the rest of my models. What separates him from the other types was the fact he has these really cool crab claws and I think overall he's just a really cool model. I also made sure to capture his good side so that when he's posed on the board he looked nice and pretty. Now moving on to my next model was the Winged Prime and this is a brand new character to Tacticus. When it came to converting him however there were a lot of changes I needed to make. First off he originally is posed in this downward sort of motion and we really wanted to open him up a bit. Also, unfortunately, one of our legs appeared to be missing, so I grabbed one of the legs from the Lictor kit and this worked pretty well. This leg is pretty much exactly the same as the Winged Prime, so this was a pretty good fit. All I needed to do was a little bit of green stuff on his hoof. I should mention that this original model is actually pushed to fit. So I had to cut a lot of these sprue tags off so I could pose the arms however I wanted. Once I was happy with how everything was looking, I went ahead and started filling in some of those gaps with some liquid green stuff. Because in our final diorama, this model is going to be attacking Marnius, we wanted to try and give him a really threatening pose. This meant we need to reposition his wings to make them look a bit more threatening. This took a lot of time and patience on my end to try and get the perfect pose for them, but I think it worked really well. And with a little bit of green stuff just to fill those holes, he was looking super spooky. And we can't forget about the termagants that are going to be huddling around the board, so I made a couple of these up as well. Technically, the Winged Prime's ability in Tacticus summons Hormagons when he attacks into an adjacent square, but we don't have any Hormagons. So we're going to use up Tormagons, they're going to look cool, and it's going to be fine. <laughs> So the time has come for us to assemble the pieces that Murray's made and do what we call the wet work on the diorama. That's where we'll put anything that needs to dry, sculpt a mold, texture paste, things like that. And for the first time, we'll start to get a proper look at what our diorama will end up being. Now I'm just gonna use a builder's corking gun because it's one of the only things that glues this EVA foam really nicely without melting it and set about laying out all these pieces and building up that foundation. So there's a reason I've been trying extra hard to get you to give Tacticus a shot and it's because I'm a daily player. I'm kind of obsessed with the game. We've got a guild tabletop time that hopefully will grow to be stronger. And since our last video, we've managed to rank it up to get 28 out of 30 players, which is pretty cool, but we're trying to get even further. Tacticus really isn't like any other mobile game. And if you're a fan of Warhammer 40K, you really do have to give it a shot. The characters in the game actually play like the characters in the lore. And a lot of attention has been paid to making sure it feels like a good representation of the 40K universe. And right now, now it's Tacticus's Halloween event and they're actually releasing these Tyranid characters we're using in our diorama, making them playable for the first time. And besides Dawn of War, I can't think of any other games that actually let you play as our favorite horrible bugs. Coming out with this awesome Halloween update, aside from a fun event for the season, we have the launch of Death Leaper and the Winged Tyranid Prime bringing the roster of Tyranid units up to four out of five. Now I'm gonna start incorporating the pieces that Murray made, making sure to align them correctly because once I glue them on, that's it, right? <laughs> so I'll sort of dry fit them first and make sure that's correct. Tacticus has a huge and ever-growing roster, and they've recently finished releasing one of my favorite factions, the Thousand Suns. Mari literally today pulled Araman, and I'm actually super jealous, to be honest. And that's one of the joys of Tacticus, is being able to play with so many cool characters from the series. There's PvE modes, PvP modes, campaign missions, as well as awesome regular events. So there's a full calendar and always something to do. This is no idle clicker, it's a fast-paced tactical combat game that's really enjoyable. And if you'd like to give it a shot and check out these brand new events. The links are down in the description. We've also got a QR code on screen. Not only that, we have two exclusive codes. So if you're a regular player of Tacticus or new to the game and you want to get some free character shards, we, the team at Tabletop Time, have each picked our favorite character in the game and you can grab a couple of shards with the code tabletop time. But if you'd like to be one of the first people to have a fully unlocked Death Leaper playable, we're giving one of them away too. All you have to do is comment on this video with either the reason you decided to give Tacticus a go and download it today, or if you already play it, your favorite thing about the game, and we'll get in touch with you. Now, a disclaimer, it will be from the official Ticked Tabletop Time channel. We never contact fans from any weird telegrams. We don't use that. Don't click those scam links. This will be from Tabletop Time with a Tick about Tacticus, the T-T-T-T-T-T-T. All right, let's keep building. So the way these overlap that Murray's done is I have to just be careful how I place it so uh, I can still place the other hexes. 
So that's the core hexes of the diorama. Of course, now when that dries, we need to detail up some stairs to connect all these, put all the rocks and detailing on and then do that wet work I talked about. I'm just gonna finish out the board using these triangles and some half hexes to create a flat square edge, but you don't need to hear anything more from me. So let's do it. So that's all gluing, but now it's time to get ready for the texturing, which is some messy work. Yep, messy work. So we've got three different tile textures we need to do. There's a pressed metal design on top of the bunker tiles, which we won't be able to do with putties and pastes. But there's also a more rough stonework that I'm gonna use on some of the tiles that lead up to the bunker. To do that, I'm gonna use this tile filler. It's like a grout. And I'm gonna apply that to the top and then basically draw in the patterns. And while Dave's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and make up some sculptor mold and try and cover some of those edges and some of the gaps in between and the top of the dirt tiles. Awesome, let's do it. Yeah. So now that we have all of the hexes established, the next thing that needs to happen is the elevation changes between them. This board can't just be a bunch of hexes. We need to make it look like a dynamic and cool part of Warhammer. So that means we need a grand staircase leading up. And I'm doing this in two textures. The first involves cutting out foam around half the size of the blocks. And these will be large stone steps. Once these blocks are done, I can secure them onto the board and then add the same textured grouting paste and draw in lines for stonework on that. Above it, however, the military bunkers lead onto this stonework with a more designed metal staircase. So I'm going to do an extra step on these and carve them out of plastic card, using the original hex template to measure and cut all of the lines to ensure they fit perfectly. Once I've made these stairs and slotted them onto the board, we can really see how this begins to come to life. Once this is done, the next step is to add some of the larger debris and detritus, such as some fuel cans, some barbed wire, and also some rocks to decorate some various areas and add to the field feeling that this is a battlefield. All of these decorations also fill out the maps of Tacticus and we're using those for inspiration. Another element of the board that needed to be finished is of course the tops of this terrain, the bunker. There is a nice metal pattern and each of them are trimmed with a metal trim. So to do this, I just use thin strips of plastic card, carefully cutting them to edge all of the hexes. For the inside metallic surface, I can use a rock to create impressions on top of the foam, which we can then paint as a metallic texture later. So all of the Tyranids in Tacticus are painted up in the Leviathan paint scheme. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint all of the Tyranids in the same color style. Luckily enough, Games Workshop has a full tutorial on how to paint the Leviathan paint scheme. I am, however, gonna make just a couple of changes to really make them stand out. The first change I'm actually going to make is spraying them in a white undercoat. Originally, I meant to spray this in wraith bone, but all I had on hand was white, and I thought this would work fine anyway. The next step is to lay down a Magos purple wash. So instead of doing this lightly, I'm gonna make this a bit deeper just to really make them pop. The next step was to dry brush just a couple of bone colors on top and the skin is pretty much done. Moving on to the scales and still using the tutorial, I painted all of these in Nagaroth Night and then washed them with Nun Oil. There were only three other details I needed to pick out in these models. The first being the black on their hooves, the second being the skin in between the wings, which is a darker fleshy tone, and then a bright red on their claws. Once the major part of the models were all done, all I need to do was go in and fill in the tongue, the eyes, and the teeth, and our tunids are looking pretty much done. So it's time to paint the the ultramarines and the weather is miserable so I couldn't get any footage of my foundational colors but basically what I did is I sprayed the whole thing chaos black then followed up with a zenithal of white and then oversprayed it all with some magic blue from Viejo. Characters in Tacticus have their own art style and the color schemes are quite punchy and vibrant to make sure you can differentiate all the different characters in the game. So I started with these really vibrant blues, so I had a really good foundation point to work from. So the Viejo magic blue, while it's vibrant, it isn't quite the right color palette for the Ultramarines. So I brought in some washes, focusing on the recess areas and building up over that armor to bring it back down to a more Ultramarines blue. Once I was happy that the 
blue was looking a bit more ultramarines, I could move on to the trim, painting all of those raised areas with a nice rich gold and then giving a Reichlin flesh shade wash to inject some warmth into it. These areas were highlighted with some light silver mixed with gold, just bringing it up to that point highlight. All the metallic areas on the models were painted lead belcher and then washed with some null oil. And from there, we could move on to some more specific elements. Bellator, for example, has these yellow checkered patterns on his knees and a red helmet, while Certus includes much more uses of dark grays in the accent colors, such as for his large camo cloak. I used mid grays, mixing in some browns to highlight into the brown gray spectrum rather than the blue gray to split this off again from the blue of the ultramarine armor. Manius Kalgar is covered in a huge amount of detail, gold filigree, reds, leathers, and all of these were painted in turn, highlighted up and washed. Now, thankfully, ultramarines have a wide array of transfers, so a lot of the symbols on the models could be emulated perfectly with the transfer directly out of the box. With these steps done, I did a final pass just to blend everything together, and then the painting step for these ultramarines was done. So to lay all the foundation colors into the diorama, we used some aerosols. So after sealing the exposed foam with some Mod Podge, we focused first on the Imperial Bunker elements, which we sprayed in a dark green. We then gave a few smatterings of a lighter green towards the upper areas to give it a bit of foundational highlighting. Then using a piece of paper, we roughly masked off that area and sprayed the rest of the diorama in a brown. These foundational colors will really allow us to pick out the dirt and also detail the bunker areas with stippling and weathering later. So once the spraying was all done, it was it was time for me to go ahead and start laying down some base colors. We pretty much followed the color scheme to the Tacticus maps that you see when you play the game, making the brickwork a very slate gray, the Imperial bunker walls a green, and a silver for the metallic areas, including the stairs. Once I was happy with the base coat, I gave everything a dry brush to make it pop, building everything up to a really bright contrast. To really make this world just look a little bit more lived in, it was time to move on to pigment powders. Once I applied these and sprayed them down with some airbrush thinner, I also did the same to the tops of the bunkers, giving them more of a brown tone. Once the foundation colors were done, I laid down some static grass on top and then added a couple of shrubs to really bring it to life. The last thing I needed to do was add in just a couple of focal points, including some barbed wire and these little pieces that I've painted up really quickly. And with that, our terrain is basically all done. We'd like to thank our patrons. Your support allows us to make two videos a week. If you'd like to join our Patreon Discord, get access to exclusive perks such as our mini review, or just ask us how we're doing today. All those things and more, like our weekly update through our Patreon. Links in the description. Yeah, we're done. We thank you it. so much Tacticus for sponsoring this video. And remember to get those character shards for the characters we love. Use the code table.time in Tacticus. And for your chance to be one of the first people to have an unlocked Death Leaper, comment below. We had a lot of fun building this. Sort of had our own impromptu duel at the top there. And it's about lunchtime, so we're probably gonna go play Tacticus. We learn a lot. We learn how to love. We learn how to become closer as enemies because Mari pulled Araman during the filming of this video. I and sure did. I still don't have Araman, and now I'm jealous. Bye. I'm just gonna go uh, admire Araman for a bit. <laughs> you bastard!